Okay, let's discuss Team B. So, Team B has the hardest boss in general, because... Well, I don't count the first boss as the hardest because it's basically luck, in terms of not getting hit by a thousand needles on the first turn and all of that fun stuff. So, yeah, this boss is just consistently difficult, and that means we kind of need a solid team to go against it. And I just realized my levels are really even, actually, it's kind of cool. So, we have some core principles to go over. The formation is Neo Hakurei mostly because I can actually resist things a little bit better with this one. Also, I can area heal the entire party by targeting Aya, and Aya's evasion should mean that she doesn't get hit enough to die very often, so that's kind of the idea there. But it's a pretty solid party for just healing everyone, and that's kind of kind of important for this. And it also doesn't cut defense, which is important as well. So, let's go over stat stuff for a sec. Uh, Sunai is running water resistance, stab resistance, and variety resist, because there are some debuff stuff which might actually impact a bit. Acid Storm is used in the fight, and uh, water resistance is good because of that. You don't need to worry about fire, of course, because the enemy is going to be... Uh, not using fire ever because it's water based and uh, it does do stab attacks it will probably still kill me with said stab attacks if it hits me full blooded but uh, one or two of them I can survive with stab resistance so we'll go with that. Uh, Sanai's armor also does give resistance to instant death which is another thing that can happen when the water line goes up and unfortunately this boss is weak to electric instead of fire which means that you can't use the land to your advantage quite so much in this fight. As a result, water resistance and again a little bit of stab resistance is kind of important on Reimu here. And she has the cute soul because bombs are a bit of a limited stock and Reimu needs bombs for both barriers and for healing because her regular talisman heal is terrible. But her aura jewel is absolutely ridiculous, like completely max HP healing sort of thing. Almost overpowered in a sense, but yeah, it's it's good, so we need to keep that up. And I uh, I didn't actually say I made the t tier six weapon for Yomu. Uh, yes, I also made it for Yomu, but uh, made the tier six weapon for Reimu. I keep mistaking those in his. I have no idea why, but yeah, it gives uh, exorcism for both magic and physical, but this boss does resist light, so Remu is not going to be doing too much damage here. However, it's been made for the future because it's good for that. And Aya also has her tier 6 weapon. I had 5 trapezohedron after doing the enemy clear out in the last stage, so even though Aya's not going to get used too often for stuff, it's still very nice to have her being her weapon around here because it gives 30 extra evasion. And that evasion is really, really good for this fight. Like, 146 evade plus the skill that we'll be using for her and the Sunai buff, it means that physical hits won't hurt her too often. The magic hits are all water based, which is why she has the shower amulet, so she defends against that. And that should be enough to keep her alive, which is important. Also, she has a magic shield, so that might help as well. Natori is another character I made the tier 6 weapon for, I'm basically out of general materials because of all this, but yeah, I made the weapon and it uh, doesn't have a lot of accuracy, it's about 75 accuracy it has to start with. So she absolutely needs the headshot goggles free, and even that isn't enough to make her hit most of the time in this fight. So we do also have uh, Sunai with an accuracy buff for this as well. Instant death resistance is the only other thing that's needed because her camouflage does actually give... Uh, her armor gives blind resistance and it also... You know, she has natural water resistance, so she doesn't need anything else that way. She might end up getting killed by the stab attacks, which would be unfortunate, but we can just hope that doesn't happen because that would set me back too much. This boss needs to die in about six turns, five or six turns, otherwise I'm kinda screwed, but 
I can deal with that. So, like I said, I made Yomu's tier 6 weapon. It's very accurate, unlike the uh, previous one we discussed. And it has full exorcism and the Slayer, which doesn't matter in this fight. So, neither of those traits are too important, but it's a lot more powerful than the tier 4 one, so... You know, you can see she almost has 300 physical attack now. It's very nice. Uh, the Tobikura is Restrict Resistance, so that's where my Blind Res comes in, the Charismatic Ghost Band for instant death, and I didn't have any decent attack raising things anymore, so I just decided, because I'm using my user for Crit Chan stuff, that the Skill Ring would be kind of nice here. Unfortunately, I didn't get Skill Ring 3 during my farming stuff, but 2 will be okay. Like, that's still a decent extra bit of uh, crit right here, so yeah. Uh, let's go growth-wise next. Um, I had, you know, faith is my normal thing for Sunai, but unfortunately I think it's more important to have Miracle here. Because if somebody dies, I can usually survive one hit unless it's a tentacle. And that kind of necessitates having more HP on Revival than 25%. Because if somebody has 25% Acid Storm hits them for about 200 damage, then they just kind of die. But everybody's got enough HP to survive something like Acid Storm as soon as they come back. And even though Rimu's barriers are ridiculously fast, Tengu's support from Ayo would actually let me switch the order around here so that Sanai can revive somebody first and then they also get affected by the barrier, which is super cool. Because, you know, they then get full HP as well as that, and it's just nice. I had just enough power points that I could keep 10% HP, 15% MP here, so I lose my magic evade and I lose a little bit of magic defense, but I think it's okay. It's a good trade off and the MP is okay as well, so yeah. Reimu unfortunately does not have enough points to get to an extra thing here, you know, like I'd love to have the magic attack up because that does affect heals a little bit, or I could go ahead and put the light element strength up here. But Reimu's MP is a little low, and her MP is raised by her Gohei tree. So that 10 extra MP means that I can cast another heal, and whilst that doesn't matter as much here, a lot of her stuff is still pretty expensive, even after the cooldown, uh, not the cooldown, the cost down. So she does still need a fair bit of uh, MP for this fight, especially because I can't fit the magic ring on as well. So that's kind of my logic here, going for as much MP as I can whilst uh, keeping up bomb stocks for everything else. And uh, yeah, there's really not a whole lot else you can say. You definitely need AoE healing with Raymir, that's for sure. For Aya, Aya's fan tree is another reason to make a fan for this fight, is that she gets skill cooldowns, all skill cooldowns, not just uh, physical, it's a magic skill as well, so that means that I can use my bomb skills every single turn, which is quite good. Uh, 20 points into the air war means that she has more than enough MP here. I could take 4 points out of there and place them into other stats, like more accuracy or more defense, and, but these are really minuscule bonuses and just not worth it at all at this point. Uh, these points could also all go into the reporting tree, so I had an extra bomb, which would give me an extra shot at uh, using her bomb skills that we'll get into shortly. But this fight shouldn't last long enough for that, keep saying that, but if it does last more than the 7 turns that Io will be using bomb skills for, I probably already lost. So whatever, you know, we're going with the uh, this tree because more HP and more perfect dodge. Having some perfect dodge might actually keep her alive, and that is also important. For the Tori, you obviously need max... Yeah, excuse me. I actually need maxed out uh, gun tree stuff for Lazy 8. And as much MP as possible, because Lazy 8 is freaking expensive, like 24 MP, and there's no way of reducing that cost as well, so it's kind of ridiculous. And as much elemental strength as feasible is the other thing to go for here. 
Uh, I actually used to have three points out of here into the uh, tree here to get extra HP. I think I'll be okay without it, but I know that if it doesn't work out I can just switch back and it'll be fine. But the important thing is to have at least five points into this tree so that you can have elemental cooldowns minus one as well. Because once you've done that, you can Element Bullet and Lazy 8 will have zero cooldown because Physical Skill cut down here, Elemental cut down here, has a two turn cooldown, both stack up because it gets classed as, you know, all of your attacks get classed as a, uh, the element when you have an Element Bullet on, and it's super happy fun times. So yeah, definitely make sure you have the cooldowns away so that you can radi uh, Rage 8, Lazy 8, Radiate eight times in a row, except you shouldn't be doing that, because you shouldn't be surviving eight turns, whatever. Yomu is pretty much the same old, you know, HP into this. This could come down a car at one point, I think, but I don't actually think there'd be anywhere else I would put it, so whatever. Decided to go with the evasion and defense this time, rather than the uh, Azura Stance, I don't know if that's the right call to be honest, but I think it's okay. Like, the uh, physical attack plus 10 would be nice, but I kind of like having the evasion and the defense here. And I don't need accuracy up, Yomu's already got over 200 accuracy and Sanai has an accuracy buff, so no point in doing that. Obviously, despite not being able to do instant death, the crit plus 10 from maxing out this tree is still incredibly important, especially when using Manusa, because you already have crit up from that, so yeah, Yomu needs to critical hit as many times as possible, and that is the idea. So then, we finally have the skills, and since this is an all physical party for offense, since the boss was this light, Reimu can't really attack her too much, but the nice stuff, nice with that, bleh, English much? <laughs> the nice thing with that is that I can focus on physical buff stuff. So physical attack, accuracy is necessary for Lazy 8 because it has a penalty in that, and uh, Wind of the Mind's Eye for synergizing with uh, Aya's attack, which we shall get to momentarily. And of course res buff because this boss does have blindness, it has defense down, it has uh, instant death as I've said before. There's a lot of nasty state of stuff that it can do, so yeah. For Remu, I think if a spray does actually impact the amount of damage my, uh, my heals will recover, so yeah, light element, the stronger that the light land is, the more you should be healing, so... It's kind of a gimme skill, like there's there's no good sixth skill that she has right now because I don't have uh, her next uh, barrier, so this is kind of the best I've got. Just in case somebody gets blinded that needs to, say Natori gets blinded through her resistance or whatever, then uh, obviously I've got the cure for that, although I think the Afuda of Healing cures that anyway, so... I don't know what this is actually going to do, but again, Reimu can't physically damage this boss very much because it does resist light. So she's mostly here for heals and for her barrier, and that is it. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't get to do much else as Reimu in this fight. But those two traits are incredibly important to surviving, so Reimu is still needed despite not doing too much. For Aya, Aya's got almost all bomb skills, they all have zero cooldown when I'm using her stuff here though, which is actually really neat, to be honest. But turn 1 she'll be setting up Peerless Wind God so I can move first every turn, and then most of the time she'll be using uh, Camouflage so that we have increased evasion for the turn. The other, the other option here is to use uh, Full Wind, which I might use on turn 2 so that I can guarantee attacking before I put my accuracy buff on. And otherwise, if somebody does die, then I might Tengu support revive. But pretty much, Aya is here to use Peerless Wind God and then Camouflage every turn until the boss is dead. That's the idea. 
Notori is designed to use Element Bullet and then Lazy 8 every turn. There really isn't anything else to do for Notori, so yeah. She might use Optical Camouflage, probably not though because of the multi-target nature of many of the attacks we'll be fighting here. I don't think it'll do enough to justify taking a turn to use it. Because the more turns I take to use stuff like this on my main attackers, the less attacking they do. <laughs> That's pretty obvious, right? But uh, yeah. Notori's going to be my biggest damage dealer, so she needs to just be using Lazy 8 every turn. Makes sense, right? Then finally, Yomu is just designed for Manusa stuff, as usual. Nothing really special. There's nothing special you can do with Yomu, to be honest. I mean, if you're using the Kusanagi instead of her Sigtio Sword, you can get fancy with um, Dragon Fang Strike and other skills like that, but if you're using the katana, you don't get any extra skills other than Law of Providence. So, yeah. I mean, she won't even need the uh, Law of, Cal of Calming, or whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, Spirit Calming. Because if she does get blinded, then all I need to do is Tengu support Remu to cure with her Ofudo. So, yeah. That is Team B basically going to uh, zap the world with electrical bullets That's and hopefully not get caught in tentacles on the way past, because that would be very bad. So, Team 2, and this team I actually need to switch my stuff for, so heck yeah, switching on the fly. So. Yes, second team is here, and this is by far the cutest of the trio. I actually really, really like this fight work on uh, this particular enemy. And uh, she is Chihiro. Chihiro Himaka. Definitely the cutest of the sisters. <laughs> and they're not sisters, they're mates, but yeah, definitely cutest of the mates. So our invasion needs to be halted, apparently, so... Uh, yeah, there's a slight typo there, there needs to be a space after the comma, but whatever, that's translation stuff for you. And uh, Maid would be trying to impede us because the Maids can do battle as well when their job is on hi um, hiatus. I mean, Saki is a Maid, right? And she, uh, she can fight really well. Like, really well. So, <laughs> yeah. Don't understand, but we're gonna settle it with the violence that we know how to do. And, uh, no, you are no ordinary maid, because you are... yeah, tentacle controller, I suppose. You can kinda see that with her hair at the moment. And, uh, yeah. She is an octopus! Really happy-faced octopus, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, why does everybody keep thinking of these as food? That's not very nice. <laughs> Your advance will end here. So yeah, Chihiro will protect everything because she can. So, welcome to the most difficult of the fights, but also one which I have a relatively decent plan against. So. The kinks in the plan is that she could use Tentacle, and actually she has a multi-target, or not multi-target, but a multi-hit Tentacle attack called Tentacle Dance, which uh, basically is not quite as powerful as the regular Tentacle, but hits several times and can hit several characters. So yeah, it's, it's really strong, but I have a pretty solid way of dealing with this fight. So on the first turn, she will always use uh, she will bomb reload focus magic and use a multi-target water move that will basically kill you if it hits you. It's exceptionally powerful, but the encompassing tiger circle will make sure that we don't get affected by that at all. When the water land is not high, there's no chance of the uh, the move causing instant death, so we'll be okay from that. And basically the first turn is all set up, uh, Aya is using Peerless Wind God, so we have a field spell to basically make us go first every turn, which is really good. And we'll just raise physical attack since there's no damage going to be, you know, going out against us this first turn. So that's good. 
get ourselves all fully prepared, and this is her attack right here. Octopus Maelstrom Swirl. Yep, no damage, but she does raise the land enough that she starts healing. That healing is annoying, but it's not going to really make a difference in the end. So, turn 2, the way we're going to work this, we're going to use Tengu's Fall Wind here, so that all of our physical attacks will hit. Because Chihiro has enough evasion where Notori cannot hit with all of her moves, as I described in the description uh, of the team for this part. So, we'll just if A for Spray as well, we may as well, and uh, Slash Fraternity, I already have my attack buff, so I can go all out with Yomi straight away, and we'll take the second turn to buff Evasion. Because when she's not using uh, Octopus Maelstrom Swell, she'll occasionally use Acid Storm, but she'll mostly use physical, you know, basic phys physical attacks and tentacle. So, basically, we can use evasion buffs to make them, you know, make us not immune to it, but very, very likely to avoid most of the nastiness that comes our way. So Yomu getting three attacks, pretty decent. Three criticals, that's always nice. And there is Lazy 8 going in, seven hits, pretty good. And yeah, that that's what can happen though. Oh wow, that still caused paralysis, okay. I did not know that. Ah, uh, okay, that causes a fair few problems. Uh, let's hang you some well, actually, I don't need to tank your support here. I'm going to raise everybody's evasion here, although paralysis cuts your evasion to zero, right? Uh, or maybe not. I don't remember. So, I think I can cure paralysis with my Fudo of Healing here, and I need to obviously revive Natori straight away. This... I was sort of afraid this would happen, and now the fight's gonna go downhill really quickly. Because I need to take a turn to set up Notori again at this point. Yes, you can cure that, which is good. And thankfully that didn't connect, which is nice. So, yeah, this is where we are at right now. This is okay. I mean, I'm losing turns here because I need to set up again, but... I think I'll still be okay. I'm going to use Aura Jewel here so I can recover all of my health. And we'll keep on the offensive with Yomu. I need to re-element Tori. And we need a res buff in here right now because that paralysis is not cool. I don't want to get hit by that again. So yeah, good crit. 2k damage, that is nice. And the defense down is pretty solid too. Yeah, you can see just how much health that... Uh, that attack can heal, which is nice. Alright, so now we have the focus magic come in again. I don't think the land is high enough yet where that will actually get us killed. So, I reckon we'll be okay just using... Uh, what do I want? I think I actually want to use Tanker's Fall Wind here. And uh, we'll be okay using the Tiger Stripe Circle. We'll slash of Eternity, we'll Lazy Aid, and we'll attack buff so that uh, Notori can have that up. I don't need the accuracy buff this turn because I'm guaranteeing all my moves hit with Tiger's Full Wind. And hopefully we'll be okay for just, you know, Lazy Aiding away here. So we go. Reasonable enough damage off of that. Good amount of hits there, and there's actually a magic reflect come off of that. Oh, but it can instant kill at that like that land level. Bollocks. <laughs> yeah, this fight is not going as well as it probably should be, but we do still have Peerless Wind God up. So you know what? I'm just gonna go for it here. I'm gonna raise accuracy so Notori should hit with most of her shots, and I think we'll win this turn. It's either a win or a lose situation, but I think with that, yeah, we win this turn. Yeah, it's a rough fight, and even when you are prepared as I am with it, and that strategy worked flawlessly three times in a row when I did this before, so... Yeah, it can still kill you if, uh, if you're not quite so lucky. Like, uh, you ignore the damage when you use that uh, Tiger Stripe Circle, but you do not ignore the status. 
and even with a resistance buff it can still catch you, so... Oh, the X is in the eyes! Man, Chihiro is so ridiculously cute. Uh, picked the wrong fight, yep. Nope, we are not normal either. <laughs> oh, she's so sad though! Ah, oh, eight tentacles, blah blah blah. How many limbs you have? Yeah, I... Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, she's she's really really tired now. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Since she has fallen unconscious, we're just basically able to go past, and uh, that's fine. <laughs>